So I've gotten two emails this week from guys in high school, young guys, who want to know when it's okay to fight. Apparently, specifically with one of these guys, there's a kid at school that's kind of been egging him on, provoking him, and making threats. Hasn't done anything physical yet, but the threat of attack is there. Now, for full disclosure, I fought many times in the past. I was a high school kid just like you, in college, getting in bar fights. Through my experience and wisdom, who I am today, I will share with you my strongest sentiment, and that is your best bet is not to fight. And I don't say that like a corny adult. I say that from a place of sincere experience, and, and, and love, honestly, you know, because I don't want to see anything happen to you. And fights are getting weirder and weirder as uh, the generations go on. You know, kids carry razors, they carry guns. Here is what the big, and again, this is just not corny adult shit. I'm 33, so I'm, I'm getting corny, I'm getting old. But the fact is that the bigger man, the stronger man, the man with the more, the most courage is going to be the one that steps up and instead of attacking preemptively, begins preemptive, preemptive peace talks. You see, the thing with fighting is that it's mostly done in a hysterical state. You know, you're attacked, you don't fucking think, you just go crazy and you want to start fighting, you start throwing arms or, you know, it's all emotionally driven. There's no grounding, there's no pragmatism. It's all emotion. And to react emotionally or even to, to attack, emotionally is weak plain and simple you've lost your head you've lost your grounding and your manhood is based in your grounding right it's down here down below when you're up here you're all fired up you know you're up here and you've lost your balls when you stop breathing deep you'll know this right away he comes around and your breathing becomes shallow your shoulders tense all your energy moves up. Now you're moving from a place of hysteria, emotion. You're not a man at that point. Your balls have been severed from your character. What you've got to do is this. When you are in the vicinity or approaching him, take a deep breath. Several deep breaths if you can. Lower your voice. The lower you can, the, you can bring your voice down, the more of your grounding you're going to access. The more manly and in control you will be. The more you're up here and you're wild and you're thinking, oh, what's up, what's up? You're a bitch. High-pitched voice, a lot of energy. Get down. Get down here. Down into your belly, down into your balls. Approach him and look him in the eye. He's going to freak the fuck out because nobody expects this and extend your hand. The next thing you say is very important and this is gonna be the toughest thing for you. Extend your hand and apologize. You tell him that you're still, sorry, I'm sorry. That's gonna be your words, your very first words. I know, you're thinking, Elliot, what the, what the fuck? What the fuck? It's not me, it's him? Listen, you're being the fucking man right now. Extend your hand and say, listen, I want to apologize. In the past, you and I have not seen eye to eye, but I want to put an end to it right now. Can we do that? With your deep, grounded voice. Look him in the eye and wait. He's not going to know what the fuck to do. Okay? If he extends his hand and shakes, you guys shake, embrace him. That's it. It's fucking over. Because men are like that. It's fucking over. It's done. Never to be mentioned again. Women, they might bite back and st like talk about each other behind each other's back even though, after they shook hands. Not men. Squash it, you squash it. If he reacts hysterically, moves up, and you'll know this because he'll, he'll get real active up top. His, his breathing will get short. If he hits you, you fucking hit him back. No question about it. If he hits you, after you extend your hand, you hit him back. Okay, so I've given you two scenarios. One, he extends his hand. One, he hits you, you hit him back. There's, that's just defense. The third scenario is he turns his back on you. 
bitch move on his part. What you've got to do next is very important. Go and tell as many people as you can what happened. Explain. Go to your teachers, go to your parents, go to your friends, go to everyone. Listen, I went to this guy, extended my hand in peace, and he refused it. Here's what's going to happen next. If he comes at me, I'm going to hit him. I'm going to hit him if he comes at me. So you're basically, you're setting yourself up for a win because you're letting everyone know that you preemptively created peace talks. And if he attacks you, you're going to attack him back. Let the principal know. Listen, I don't want to fight, okay? But I've extended my hand and he made it known at that point that he's not interested in peace. I'll keep my distance, but if he comes at me, I'm going to tear him apart, okay? This is your best case scenario, dude. This is the best thing that you can do. Being a kid in high school, being a kid in college, and you know, college is a different story because you start drinking and all the fighting is beer goggle, beer muscle drinking, it's all stupid. High school, you know, you're, you're fighting for your position. I get that. You will be a bigger man if you use the scenario I just shared with you. Share it with your friends. Share this video with your friends. All right? Good luck. Do the right thing. Elliot said, Elliot. what?